Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Lon McAllister in Mary O'Hara's Green Grass of Wyoming on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present Green Grass of Wyoming, a delightful story by Mary O'Hara, who wrote that other story which was so well liked on our playhouse last season, My Friend Flicker. A year or two ago, I drove across the state of Wyoming, and ever since then, the very name has called to mind the long, lonely roads and the tremendous expanse of rolling upland. Truly, it could be said that the history of Wyoming is the history of its grass, the green grass of which Miss O'Hara writes. Her story, rich in understanding of people and animals, is full of the open-air spirit of this great upland state. And for our star, we are very fortunate to have that young and accomplished actor, Lon McAllister. And now, a word about Hallmark cards from Van Gogh before we begin the first act of Green Grass of Wyoming. There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar, for birthdays, anniversaries, holidays... Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, there is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Mary O'Hara's Green Grass of Wyoming, starring Lon McAllister. <laughs> The chugging engine of an onrushing train shattered the stillness of the night as it slowly climbed the big hill. Below, a white stallion, gazing up at the huge monster, gave a convulsive start. Flames were springing from the boxcars. The train was on fire. Then the train came to a sudden halt. Bedlam had broken loose. Freight was unloaded as quickly as the train men could handle it. Unnoticed, the horse stall slid down the hill, and from within came the frightened voice of a young filly. Warily, the white stallion came close, and as the filly struggled and thrashed in her distress, he reared up and furiously poured the horse stall with cleaver-like strokes until the side gave way, and the filly rolled out. Into the dark Wyoming night, the great white stallion fled, and at his heels was the filly. September day at the Goose Bar Ranch, Bob McLaughlin called his young son, Ken, into his office. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hello, son. Ken, you remember Beaver Greenway, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. He owns the Blue Moon Stables. Well, uh, last night, your stallion kicked a horse stall apart that was holding his white champion racing filly, Crown Jewel. Ran off with it. But that's impossible, Dad. You know that Thunderhead's up there in the Valley of the Eagles, and that I dynamited the on the entrance. He couldn't get out. Well, he's not there now. Even dynamite couldn't hold that wild beast. Thunderhead's the greatest stallion that ever lived. He had bad blood in him. He's a killer. I I just don't understand it. He's been living like a king of the range. Y you know he wouldn't ever want to leave his mares. His mares died of grass poisoning. All I know is that he's on the loose. Oh, no. From now on, he'll be stealing mares from every ranch. And I'm going to be held personally responsible for the loss. I should have had him taken away by the Humane Society when I had the chance. I don't want him touched by the Humane Society ever. They'd kill him. Oh, Ken, you don't know what the Humane Society is for. They don't destroy life, Ken. They try to get a home for Thunderhead. I don't believe it. I'm not taking any chances. I don't know what I'm going to tell Beaver Greenway and his little niece, Carrie, when they get here from Arizona. Joe, so, you and your stallion. Oh, Dad, maybe maybe it wasn't Thunderhead. He isn't the only white stallion in these parts. There's Ishmael. Buck Daly saw the whole thing. 
Identified Thunderhead. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. That animal runs to trouble. Well, I'll admit he's done things that were wrong, but so have I, Dad. Then you've always given me another chance. Well, you better face it, son. When Thunderhead's caught, he'll be given to the Humane Society. And if he tries to get away, he'll be shot. Right then and there. Oh, Rob. Dad, suppose I trail Thunderhead and Crown Jewel and bring him back. Will, will you give him another chance? It won't help, Ken. I've made up my mind. Well, I, I guess there's nothing else I can say or do. See you later. Oh, Rob, how could you? Well, he's a lad of one idea, Nell. Whatever he loves or wants has to belong to him exclusively and completely. He, he's almost 17 now, and if this, this intensity, this not letting go continues, he's, he's bound to get hurt. Rob, anyone who loves is possessive. If they weren't, it, it would mean they were lukewarm and indifferent. I'm, I'm rather proud that Ken loves like that, wholly and utterly. Take a walk, huh? Oh, surely, Ken. Are you really Carrie Marsh, Beaver Greenway's niece? Yes, uh huh. Why do you seem so surprised? Well, it, it's just that. Well. Yes. Well, you're you're older than I thought you'd be. More uh, grown up. Why, I'm fifteen. You are? Oh, that's mm -hmm. swell. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm glad you're here. But I'm I'm awful sorry about your filly and about my stallion stealing her. I haven't slept worrying about Crown Jewel. Well, Ken, why did he do it? Maybe he'll kill her. Oh, no. It's not like that at all. He just wanted her for his band of mares. He knew she was a winner, and he just kicked that stall to pieces till she was free, and then he ran away with her. It's kind of like eloping. Uh, you really think he fell in love with her? Oh, I'm sure he did. Uh, what's he like? Well, he's just about the most wonderful horse you ever saw. He stands about 16 hands high... And he's perfectly formed, like a statue. And he's pure white and strong and full of power. <laughs> you just can't understand what Thunderhead's like until you've seen him. Thunderhead. Thunderhead. Oh, that's a good name for a horse like that. He's named after a cloud. From the day he was born, I, I wanted him to be a racer. And I asked Mom to give him a big, important name that would be right for a white horse. And she looked up in the sky, and there was a big white Thunderhead creeping slowly up. So she named him that. Oh, that's beautiful. I wish I could see him. I wish you could, too. But I wish more than anything that no one ever sees him again. Not even me. I don't understand. Well, I'd, I'd rather not say. But but you needn't worry about Crown Jewel. Dad's organized a search party, and we're leaving Friday morning at 3 o'clock. We'll bring her back. Oh, gee, I wish I could go. Well, you, you could come with us until we reach the foot of the mountains, and then Cookie could ride you back here in the chuck wagon. Oh, no, I, I, I'd better not. My granny's here with us, and I wouldn't want to disturb her. Well, I bet your granny's a heavy sleeper, Carrie, especially at three in the morning. Please come. But how am I to wake up? An alarm clock would wake granny. Well, I'll tell you what. Leave the screen up a little, and then I can put my hand in and reach your shoulder. Will you come? Yes, Dan. <sighs> Swell. Guys, Carrie... I wish it was the beginning of the summer instead of the end. Why? Well, don't you see? You're here now, and... Well, if it were the beginning of the summer, you could stay, and... And I've just met you, and I... I haven't even begun to know you, Carrie. Have you loaded Flicker and my horse onto the truck? Yes, Dad. Good. Why don't you and Carrie ride with Beaver in the station wagon? Oh, uh, Beaver, you sure you don't mind the girls coming along? Weather's none too good. We're likely to have plenty of cold and storms. Cold in September, Rob? Yeah, there's snow in the mountains right now. Well, what do you say, Carrie? <laughs> well, what are we waiting for, Ken? Let's go. <laughs> it's awfully dark, isn't it, Ken? Uh-huh. We're not going to see each other hardly anymore, are we, Carrie? Why not? Well, as soon as we find Crown Jewel, you'll go away with her, won't you? Yes, I, I guess I will. But maybe you won't find her so soon. No, that won't do any good. School starts next week, back east. Carrie, 
Will you write to me? I... I'd like to, Ken. Of course, when I said that this is just about our last time together, I mean for now. Because I'll see you again. Well, probably next summer. Ken, you know what I'm going to do when we get to the mountain? I'm going to ride a horse to the top so that I can watch you and the others ride off till I can't see you anymore. The others? Uh-huh. And then maybe I'll watch you a little more than the rest. You will, Carrie? Well, after all, both our horses are together and... And, well, that's right. It, it's sort of like we're partners. <laughs> No use keeping on. Storm's wiped out Thunderhead's tracks. Dad, I saw one before. I know the direction he's gone. I could find him. Now we'll go back to camp. Cookie, what are you doing here with the chuck wagon? Why are you still here in camp? You were supposed to have taken Carrie back to the ranch. Been waiting for her to come down from the mountain for hours. Believe she's lost. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Take it easy, Beaver. We'll search till we find her. She'll be all right. But it's snowing. She'll never find her way out. Carrie! Carrie! Please, God, help me find her. I should have never been so happy in all my life. Oh, Carrie, Carrie. Come on now. I'll, I'll get you back to camp. Oh, I'm so sleepy. Oh, no, Carrie, you mustn't sleep. That's, that's snow sleep. It can kill you. Now, come on, get up on your feet and keep talking. Oh, no, please. You're, you're hurting my shoulder. I, I don't want to hurt you, Carrie. Not ever, but, but you've got to keep awake. Keep talking. Say something, anything, but keep talking. I, I can't. You must. You must. Hi, John, Kenny, beautiful. The most beautiful. Oh. Who? Who's the most beautiful? Carrie, come on, tell me. Thunderhead. I saw him. Where, Carrie? Where? Off there on the crest. He was standing like a white statue, like you said. Crown jewel was beside him. In the snow. Please, Carrie, please. He's wonderful, Ken. He's wonderful. I, I'm not worried about Crown Jewel just so long as she's with him. Gosh, Carrie, you don't even know Thunderhead. And yet you're beginning to love him and trust him just like I do. I am, Ken. Yeah. You know, it's funny, but up until a few days ago, the thing I wanted most in the world was Crown Jewel. And now? I don't know anymore what it is I really want the most. Neither do I, Carrie. I'm kind of mixed up myself. But someday we'll know. We'll both know. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Green Grass of Wyoming, starring Lon McAllister. In the years when gallant blades with handlebar mustaches used to court grandma with nosegays and poetry, valentines are among the loveliest tokens of sentiment she received. If you ask her, you'll probably find she's cherished some of them to this very day. But you needn't look farther than the store where you buy your Hallmark cards to find that same old-time appeal in the valentines created for you to send this year. Hallmark old-fashioned valentines as quaint as crinoline, yet with all the endearing young charm of a love letter dated tomorrow. You'll want to see them to appreciate the artistry that distinguishes these new Hallmark valentines. The exquisite lace-like designs, the hearts and flowers, colorful ribbons and bows, all with a fresh new look, and many with a third-dimensional effect that harks back to the stereopticons of grandma's time. Among this hallmark collection of old-fashioned valentines, you'll surely find just the sentiments you'd like to express to your sweetheart. And loving valentine messages framed with forget-me-nots for wife and mother. There are special hallmark valentines for dad, each member of the family. 
So stop in this week at the friendly store where Hallmark cards are sold and ask to see the Hallmark old-fashioned Valentine collection. All have that Hallmark on the back that says, You cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of Green Grass of Wyoming, starring Lon McAllister. All through that winter, the search for the horses continued. But it wasn't until June of the following year that Rob McLaughlin believed he'd finally trapped Thunderhead and the Philly Crown Jewel. They were feeding in the flats of the Spindle River over 500 miles away from the Goose Bar Ranch. With them were at least 20 other mares that Thunderhead had stolen from ranchers. A corral was built to trap the horses, and the moment had arrived when the men were driving them into it. Yeah, they're all in. White Devil's in. Slam the gate, Dad. Yes, Ken. What did Thunderhead do that was so wrong? He freed a helpless horse who might have kicked and beat herself to death. Uh, I'm sorry, son. Hey, the white's trying to jump the corral. If he breaks out, Ken, you can have one swing with your rope. Just one. And we'll take any chances on two. And if I miss? The sheriff's got a gun that won't. Hey, there he goes. Thunderhead will make it on the next jump. What are you waiting for, Ken? Yes, please, God. I missed, I missed... Dad! He's jumped the corral, Sheriff! Sure. Oh, no! Thunderhead! Oh, Thunderhead! Oh, Thunderhead! He didn't deserve... No. Sorry, son. That's the way it had to be. Dad, this isn't Thunderhead. It's Ishmael. He, he's smaller than Thunderhead. Thunderhead's safe. He, he's free. Rob! L- look, Mr. Greenway, it isn't Thunderhead... Carrie, it isn't Thunderhead. Rob, Crown Jewel isn't in the corral. I can't understand it, Beaver. Well, I'm convinced she was internally injured in that fall from the freight car. She must have died later. Oh, no. Crown Jewel's alive. I saw her. I saw her from the mountaintop in the snow. Well, perhaps you were just imagining it, my dear. No, Carrie wasn't imagining it. She saw her filly with Thunderhead. I'll find him, and when I do, I can bring Crown Jewel back to Carrie. Now, Flecker, we're both kind of tired. But it won't be long before we find Thunderhead. You just got to be patient. Anyhow, what's the hurry to get home? Maybe I ought never to go back. Why should I? Why should I? Carrie. Yes, Carrie. Things have seemed kind of different since I met her. And yet Thunderhead... I guess there's only one thing to do when you're looking for guidance. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. We're following fresh hoof prints, aren't we, Flicka? You're trying to tell me Thunderhead's not far away. I know it. I know it. Look at those small hoof prints running along with him. Those are crown jewels. Thunderhead! I hear him! Come on, Flicka! Thunderhead! Thunderhead, I'm coming! Wolves! They're attacking crown jewel! And Thunderhead's fighting them. Look at him smash at that wolf! I'm coming, boy, I'm coming! Quiet now. It's all over, Crown Jewel. There's nothing to worry about anymore. Gee, Crown Jewel. What a beauty. I wish Carrie were here to see. (laughs) Hey, boy. Thunderhead. Gosh, I've missed you. Don't you remember me, boy? There, that's better. Come on, boy. Oats. Come on, get your oats. Uh, I bet you haven't even missed me. I bet you didn't even know I was alive. Much more you didn't care. Sure, all you want's your oats. 
and go on and eat them. Oh, I'm only fooling. I know you cared as much as I did. I'll say one thing for you. You sure have taste in picking mares. That crown jewel's a real winner. I guess you'd have to be to belong to Carrie, though. You won't mind too much if I put a lead rope around her neck, will you? I hate to, but I've got to get her back to Carrie. That's where she belongs. It's for you, Thunderhead. Well, we've been friends a long time, and I'm, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'm in love with Carrie. And someday I'm going to marry her, if she'll have me. Gee, I, I wish you could know her, Thunderhead. You'd love her just as much as I do. But I guess you're not going to meet her. Because I'm not going to take you in. You wouldn't like what they'd do to you, boy. And neither would I. So I'm giving you your freedom. Go on, take it. You've got to go, old fella. Now go on, get going. Get going as far as you can. And don't come back. Go on. Go on, Thunderhead, go on. So long, boy. I wouldn't have missed knowing you for the world. brought Crown Jewel back, but you deliberately let Thunderhead go. Don't my wishes mean anything to you? I, I couldn't do it, Dad. I, I couldn't do it to him. I couldn't let him get hurt. But what have you gained by letting him go? Don't you know that sooner or later he'll be shot? Well, at least he'll have his freedom a little longer. No matter how much longer. He's free. He's free. Oh, Rob, the boy's exhausted. He's fallen asleep. Just look at him now. He's thin as a rail. Must have lost 15 pounds. Let, let him rest. Come on. That animal's ruined his health. Well, the boy will just have to come to his senses. Forget that Thunderhead ever existed. Forget him? You know Thunderhead will be back. You know he'll follow Crown Jewel back here to the ranch. Well, when he does, you can oh, be wait, sure... wait, please, Rob, listen to me. You've... You've always disliked Thunderhead. If, if you'll just admit it and not be stubborn... You've never given the animal an even chance. A chance to really prove himself. You... You know Ken is a good boy. A fine boy. And... He couldn't love Thunderhead as he does if... if the horse weren't really good and fine, too. Oh, Rob, please. When Thunderhead does return, give him a fair chance. For Ken's sake, for me. And for yourself. Oh, please, Rob. <laughs> I find you here under this old tree. Hi, Carrie. I was just thinking about you. Huh? Good or bad? Remember when you said that you didn't know what it was you wanted most in the world? It was almost a year ago. You know now? Mm-hmm. I want to be a mother and have about eight lovely children. But, Carrie, I have to go through college. Well, Ken, what do you have to do with it? Well, someone has to be the father, hasn't he? <laughs> you know, Uncle Beaver told me when I was picking out a husband, I... I must be sure he wasn't spavined and, and to look at his teeth. Oh, well, I pass on both those counts. Anything else? Well, uh, he'd have to be a good physical specimen. Well, I'm sort of the wiry kind. Of. I uh, had pneumonia when I was ten, but I'm all over that. And he'd have to be very brave. And you are. Well, do I pass? Carrie. Yes? Carrie, don't turn away. Look at me, please. I've been waiting so long for this. We're engaged now, Carrie. Yes, Ken. That means to be married, doesn't it? Engaged to be married. Oh, I'd like that very much. Carrie, you do mean it all, don't you? I mean, it is love. The real love. It, it, it is with me, Carrie. I'll never marry anybody else but you. I couldn't. Could you? 
Oh, no, Ken, only you. No matter when or however long, it's only you. Thunderhead. Thunderhead. Why did you come back? Why? Why? You've got to get away from here. Dad. Oh, please, Dad, please. The question's been settled, son. Thunderhead's going to stay here with us. Dad, say that again. I guess a guy can change his mind, can't he? You know, when a boy loves as thoroughly and deeply as you do, I guess he merits some special rights. Good luck, son. Dad. Oh, Thunderhead. You're back home where you belong. Oh, Ken, isn't it wonderful? Wonderful, darling. It, it's just perfect, that's all. Now we've got everything. Everything, Carrie. and James Hilton will return in a moment. Remember the exhibition of paintings I told you about a few weeks ago, prize winners in the International Hallmark Art Award? The exhibition made its world premiere in New York last month and today opened in the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston, the beginning of a tour of principal cities of the United States. Seven-day prize-winning French and American paintings hang in this exhibition, winners of the $28,000 in prizes given by the makers of Hallmark cards in the International Hallmark Art Award. I know you will be interested in the high purpose of this award, to encourage fine art, to bring contemporary recognition to artists of today, and to broaden public appreciation of fine art. As friends of Hallmark Playhouse, I know you will take pride in this unusual international competition to stimulate the finest painting of two nations. Here again is James Hilton. It's rather exciting to hear a character portrayed just as you imagined when you first read the book. Lon McAllister, I want to thank you for giving us this experience tonight. Well, it was a pleasure for me too, Mr. Hilton. You know, I look forward every week to the fine programs you have here on the Hallmark Playhouse. In fact, it's pretty hard to forget Hallmark under any conditions. You see, those greeting cards of yours are such a constant reminder of so many very pleasant associations. Thank you, Lon McAllister. We try here in the Hallmark Playhouse to uphold the fine traditions which have been so long established by Hallmark greeting cards. It's gratifying to know when we succeed. What have you selected for next week? Next week, we shall present a warm-hearted story of how a new American family faced an old American problem. The story is called The Wine of Youth by John Fante. And for our star, we've invited that popular Hollywood actress, Miss Ida Lupino. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> For Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Lon McAllister can currently be seen in the Warner Brothers picture The Story of Seabiscuit, co-starring with Shirley Temple. The part of Carrie in tonight's show was played by Miss Sammy Hill. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Ida Lupino in John Fanti's Wine of Youth. And the week following, Victor Jory as Abraham Lincoln in Lincoln and the Baltimore Plot. And the week after that, Ethel Barrymore will be starred in Edna Ferber's story April 25th, as usual, on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.